why I like to carve wood, it's, it's already given us so much. It's very forgiving if you take your time with it. And it's alive. Even, even though it's not alive like we think what alive is, it's alive. There's still an energy about it. When I first started doing the trees, I, I was not painting them. <clears throat> I was actually burning them. I was using a torch and burning and shading with fire and just putting linseed oil on it. And then, you know, two years ago, on, a, on just a whim, I decided to start using colors. And when I did that, it just kind of was a game changer. I love Joe's sculpture for a few reasons, but the main reason was it was carved out of a beech tree that's been here for over 150 years. When we cut it down last year, we cut it down for safety reasons because we knew it was the time for it to go. Um, but we knew we wanted to do something with the space. So for me, it's, it's repurposing something that has meaning to the school. Beech wood is one of the highest in BTUs, so it's one of the strongest woods to carve. He usually uses a chainsaw initially. Um, it's also been on the property since, you know, a hundred and some years, so it had pieces of metal in it and some other interesting things he encountered when he was carving. So he went through quite a few uh, chainsaw blades. <laughs> um, we did put a barrier around the tree when the kids were here, and so they got to see him use the chainsaw and they got to see part of the process. and of it evolving. It's like a journey, you know, like I create a, maybe a, a structural design, but, you know, there's lots of things that happen within that preliminary structure. So the Castlewood Dragon Project, for instance, well, when I first had designed it, the dragon was going to be on the other side looking up. But after I started like walking around it and looking at it, well, I was like, look at those gnarly pieces up here. That looks like a dragon head. Okay, so the whole thing shifted and changed. It went into another direction. And so now it, it, it flows better if you do what the, how, if you can find how the tree was growing the, and it moves in a certain pattern, you carve with that. It's kind of like going with the grain, but also it's kind of going with the flow of how it tried to stay balanced. I would say to anybody who is thinking about doing something with a tree that needs to be taken down to consider leaving eight to ten feet of the trunk there to have something done with it. Um, he has done several other pieces around Louisville and they're all very interesting and unique and um, I think they just add beauty to something that, you know, instead of just cutting down the tree and nothing's there, you have something to remember the tree by.